Let's take a dive into one of the darker periods of New Orleans history. The United States is the prison capital of the world, and in the United States, Louisiana has more people incarcerated per capita than any other state. In Louisiana, the crown jewel of the prison industry complex is Orleans Parish Prison. It is one of the most notorious local prison systems in the world. And today we're going to discuss one of the lesser known horror stories from Hurricane Katrina, specifically the local prison and its inmates. This is the story on how 1,000 inmates were left abandoned in the prison buildings with no food, water, or power as Hurricane Katrina ravaged the city. Before the hurricane hit, OPP was already named one of the worst local prisons in America with multiple allegations of abuse, neglect, safety and health violations. In 1999, women inmates complained the jail would leave pregnant inmates shackled during labor. In 2002, an inmate died of dehydration after being held in isolation for 42 hours. The team was booked healthy. Three months before Hurricane Katrina, two officers were indicted for beating a man to death after being picked up for public drunkenness. The prison system held nearly 6,500 inmates before Katrina, ranking ninth in the country for largest local jail, having more prisoners than Louisiana State Penitentiary Angola. New Orleans at the time was the 35th largest city in America. 60% of the population that was behind the walls during Katrina were in on attachments. With Katrina on the horizon, this would spell danger. In the days prior to Hurricane Katrina making landfall, Mayor Ray Nagin issued the first ever mandatory evacuation for Orleans Parish. Despite this very serious warning, Sheriff Marlon Guzman accepts 300 more inmates from St. Bernard Parish Jail who were locked in a gym and guards sat watch outside the doors unarmed because guns were not allowed in OPP. Then Marlon Guzman assures the public that, I quote, the prisoners will stay where they belong. I have a generous larger staff and inmates will hang tight. Guzman was soon realized this was a situation that we had never seen before and that the city has not properly planned for. I think that As the storm sets down its destructive path on that Sunday, the generators in OPP go out. Water quickly rises in the lower floors of the buildings, and in some places, like the holding cells in HOD, the water rose to chest level. Most of the guards by this time left the building either to get back to their families or to find some base point that they can meet and find a superior. Soon, inmates began to realize that they were left to fend for themselves in pitch black with no food or water. During all the commotion and chaos as guards were fleeing the Perdido building, one guard managed to get locked in. He said it was to prevent him from abandoning his post.
hard detail seeing inmates realizing the people that were responsible for them has left them and they started to get angry. They started to try to break down the doors and kick down the doors. They started to use their metal beds to break through the cement and break holes through it so they can get free. After retreating behind another security door, the guard is ordered to grab a shotgun and go to the roof and to barricade himself in the observatory room and if he sees anybody trying to escape, he is to shoot and kill them. Meanwhile, across the street in the house of detention, inmates who were booked on misdemeanors like public intoxication, tourists who were on Bourbon Street, kids who got caught with weed, and people with unpaid traffic tickets had to kick open the bottom of the cell doors of the holding cells and waded through knee-high toxic water to get free. For four days, inmates were left inside the buildings to fend for themselves with no power, food, or water. Some locked in cells that have flooded to their knees. Interviews done by the ACLU or the American Civil Liberties Union details horrific scenes of chaos, death from the sick and disabled, fear, and violence. One of the more sadder experiences was from a 13-year-old girl in the OPP House of Detention being moved to an adult male holding area where she spent days in water up to her neck until she was eventually saved by other male prisoners who was going around and helping those that were in need in jails. Horrific stories do not end there, but Sheriff Marlon Guzman says it's all not true and no one has died despite 400 inmates remain unaccounted for. After four days, the prisoners were rescued and were dropped off from the Broad Street overpass. 3,500 inmates were being watched by 200 guards. Once they were finally rescued off the Broad Street overpass, they were taken to prisons like Elaine Hunt where no plan was ready for them again and suffered abuse at the hands of the guards of that jail and the prisoners of Ellen Hunt. Even though Marlon Guzman admitted that the sheriff's office did not have a plan in place for an event of this magnitude, he still denied any reports of mistreatment and neglect. So the American Civil Liberties Union conducted an investigation against the Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office and interviewed 1,000 inmates and found that they all had similar stories, prompting Southern Poverty Law Center's Katie Schwartzman to sue OPP on behalf of the inmates in 2012 and one in 2013 starting prison reform in New Orleans. Rest in peace to everyone that was lost in the storm. And I want to say that this is why we need to be in touch with our history. We need to know our history so things like this will never reoccur. We need to hold our, our politicians and people in office accountable. We need to go and vote to make sure people are in positions that will never allow this to happen again.